Okay, so we're here at the Instana dashboard and we are preparing to install the Instana agent into the Kubernetes cluster so that we can begin exploring not only the Kubernetes cluster, but the application we're going to deploy after we have uh, the Kubernetes cluster itself monitored by Instana. So if we get into the more menu and into the management portal, we can see the instructions for the agent installation. And if we click here, we can see over here on the right, the Helm chart that we need to install. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to put this into our terminal, which is already connected to the Kubernetes cluster. And at which point that will instruct our agent to be deployed. And while that's deploying, I'll, I'll explain what's happening there as well. So I already have this in my terminal so that we have the correct zone and cluster name set. So right now what's happening across the cluster is on all of our nodes, a container is being created for Instana and that agent will then create a sidecar which elects a leader and that leader decides who is going to communicate with the Kubernetes API to get the Kubernetes telemetry into Instana. So in a few short moments, we should start seeing some host pop up here, and that will be indicative of our agent being monitored. So while that's happening, just some background on the cluster itself. It's an on-premise cluster running in VMware. It's an eight node cluster and it was installed just the other day using CubeSpray. And we're using the bare metal VM to create an ingress so that we can access our services externally through a HA proxy load balancer that it's all running in my garage. This is sort of my playground where I just spin up clusters and, and play with this kind of stuff to get an understanding of the technology and, and how these things work. We're going to want to cut this out. Okay. All right, so we started seeing some host pop up and what you're seeing here is the agent spinning up, discovering the host and the Kubernetes cluster that is installed on those hosts. And if we zoom in here, we can start seeing a little bit more information about what's running inside of each one of these hosts. And in a moment, it'll populate with containers. And as you can see, we have a demo zone now. <clears throat> and we can see the Kubernetes uh, components as well as the metal load balancer components. So it should be a few short moments until this is fully discovered and we're able to then deploy the application that I spoke about earlier, which is the uh, chat on a uh, game service. So if we open up one of these hosts to inspect it, we can see that we had a little bit of spike activity because we did deploy this and we were monitoring it. Now, the reason that you're seeing some previous data here is because, of course, this isn't the first time I've monitored this. I, I shut everything down and, and I've reinstalled Instana on there so you can see the discovery process. But what we can see over here is that Instana has detected that this is actually a, a node that's running Kubernetes. And if we click on the cluster information, we can see all the information about what sort of CPU resources are available, what the capacity is along with memory and pods and other information such as how populated certain namespaces and deployments and nodes are. We also get information such as events and details around our cluster so that we can see information about the health of it as well as the activity from the cluster level of events. Now we do get details around the nodes, around the CPUs and the limits on each one of those. So you can gauge, you know, essentially if, if you need to start expanding out your cluster, 
But more importantly, we get information about all the services and pods that are running on the system. And we'll dive a little bit more into this when we get our application deployed next, which is what we're gonna do right now. So to deploy this application, it, it is a Helm command. We also have to create some SSL certs and some other things, and this takes a while. So I'm gonna kick off the process and we'll come back as soon as everything is up and going and I'll explain how this worked and, and what happened. All right, so now that we have this deployment happening, we can see some activity over here happening. We can see the new systems being deployed. We can see the new namespace that was created. So let's jump into the new namespace for this application. And we can see right now that these things aren't necessarily ready yet. They're still being deployed. Now, one of the interesting things about this particular view in this dashboard is if there is an issue with the deployment template. For instance, when I was creating this, I set everything up locally first and I'd set the templates for image poll policy of never instead of always. And when I deployed it to the actual Kubernetes cluster, Instana told me that, hey, these aren't going to deploy because those image policies are, are set incorrectly for this cluster. You should be pulling images rather than not. And so it made it really easy for me to troubleshoot the problem and I, I didn't spend forever digging around in kube cuddle commands trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong with my services? Why aren't they coming up? So as you can see here, some of these services have already started up and we can jump into what's behind them. Instead of just being limited to seeing the pod information in the Kubernetes dashboard, we can actually see all of the metrics and the data behind the containers running and the applications behind them without having to do any additional work or deploy additional infrastructure or manage infrastructure such as Prometheus and uh, Grafana. So let's jump into the authorization component. Now we can see that the container status is running. And if we click on the container, we're taken into a whole new view where we can see the entire context of this particular application. We can see the host it's running on, the container, the process, the JVM, and even the WebSphere Liberty uh, metrics, which are being exported by JMX. Now, how do we get all that information? How do we get the JVM information? How do we get WebSphere Liberty? Well, when the Instana agent was deployed to Kubernetes, it runs on the host. And when these applications get deployed, deployed on the host, the Instana agent detects them and then injects in real time without having to reboot those JVMs, the libraries required to do trace instrumentation as well as metric instrumentation. And then those sensors send data back to the agent, which is then shipped to our back end. And that's why you're seeing right here, the metrics almost immediately after we deployed it. So let's kind of take a look at what we get out of this, right? We get information about the threads, about the heap, as well as uh, memory pools specific to the WebSphere Liberty server as well as garbage collection and suspension. But we also get uh, the Liberty Auth uh, WebSphere statistics about how many requests are being made, what the response time. But not only that, we also get information around which requests are being made into that service, around who made that request and in what context. So let's take a look at, at what 
what this actually looks like in terms of doing some trace analytics when we start actually using the service. Instead of just being limited to the metrics, we can also use Instana to get information about the context of those requests. So let's let's take a look at what that in turn looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into applications. And we're going to go into all services. Now, as you as I mentioned before, I was running this service before I started this webinar. So this gap here is just whenever I shut everything down and I started everything back up. So what we can see here is we have multiple services being executed. And let's take a look at the auth one now. And I want to analyze those traces. Now, what we're going to see here mostly is health events. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the actual service itself and attempt to break it. So, you know, see if we can find any problems with it. So I go to game on nashgo.org and enter it. I want to log in with my Twitter account. Okay, it looks like we had an issue. And what it's telling me is that there was something wrong with the consumer access token. Now, normally you'd have to set up an alert or some sort of system to pull the data from the JVM, such as Prometheus, and then write a, an alert saying, look for 401s, 500s. And then if you got an alert around that, you'd have to go and look at the logs and try and figure out where did this happen? Who did it happen to? Why did it happen? Now let's take a look at what that looks like inside Instana. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh this page so that we get some of the more recent events out of it. Now we can see this event happening just a moment ago. This didn't take very long for, for Instana to pick it up because we collect metrics and traces in one second granularity and within three to five seconds you're seeing it in your dashboard. So we can see here that a user came in, tried to authorize with Twitter, and if we look at these details, we get the authentication error along with the stack trace so that we can see where in this particular service, this particular issue happened. So it makes it very easy to not only discover but to understand what the problem was. And if this was something that was regularly occurring or if it was happening uh, several times within a short period of time, our machine learning would detect it and say, this is an anomaly and alert you to it without you having to configure an alert or, or do anything to, in, that, in that regard. So that gives you not, sort of an idea of how quickly you can get started with Instana in a production level environment. Now, I do want to jump back into presentation mode and kind of discuss some of the things that we've discovered using Instana at Single Music. So let's head back.